I'm just so happy that you have this opportunity today to share your work and to interact with the writers and also to have some of your um, peers hear your work and just give you, give you an opportunity to share what your aspirations are with regard to writing. And you'll hear from the writers today what their writing process has been. So I think it will be a really uh, good experience for everyone. I usually just kind of let the feeling take me, you know? And the thing that I watch out for is that every day I try and do something creative. If it's not writing, if, I'm, if I've got writer's block and I can't write, I don't stress out about it because I'll do something, I'll paint instead or I'll, or I'll throw a pot or I'll, as, soon, as long as I'm creating, and I count knitting by the way as creating, so as long as I'm doing something creating, creative that day, I have this superstition that the creative juices are still flowing and it'll come back to the writing channel in its own time. Again, I think it's for me, it's really, write about people first. When you write, you know, you might have a totally different process. You might want to write about a place. I really am fascinated about people, you know, the stories of people. And I think that that is also a part of what I do every day. You know, I study people, I study what they like, and that helps kind of make better decisions about what they want to buy and how they want to consume products. And I feel, at least for me in my writing, is kind of the same process. You have to have that when you're writing, even if you're writing short stories. And people, really love the characters. So that's my process. I know sometimes people think about beginning, middle, end. I think about who are the people, because if you're interested in who they are, I think you'll take, you know, the story can travel wherever they go. And now I'd like to take some time to give our young writers an opportunity to share their work. To whichever Earth inhabitant is reading this message, we come in peace. We are inhabitants of the planet Corman, a planet too far away for your primitive scientific equipment to detect. However, because of our far more advanced technology, we are able to observe you Earthlings, even though you are not aware of our existence. We have been studying your habits, languages, and customs for many Earth time years. Thirteen years ago, the thorns of 65 roses finally let him dry. Now, his presence is a candle. Fire kept burning by memories. Light dimming more and more and more with each passing day. A man modified by world's code glasses and the sands of time. Now, I wonder, who was the man behind the memories? I will never know. The girl that closed her eyes and cried, going through so much pain, wanted to commit suicide. She thought how she would do it. She thought how, how others would feel. She thought how she would take her life by leaving the fate in the metallic knife. Leave her alone, her heart be quiet. Knowing she wants to kill herself, her heart be silent. She hates herself, she hates her life. There's no purpose in life, so just let her die. She would commit suicide, but she just fails to do so. Maybe if someone does it for her, she wouldn't, she wouldn't be scared to go. Jules hesitated to go inside, but she figured that there was a 50% chance that the so-called clinic was air-conditioned. Since it was hot enough to make your thighs stick together and your tongue feel like paste in your mouth, she steps inside. More disappointment, it wasn't air-conditioned, or even clean for that matter. Once inside, her father motioned for her to take a seat on the hard wooden chairs that were piled in a messy row that circled around the entire length of the small room. But even with the many clusters of chairs that covered the room, not everyone had a seat. On a cold Sunday winter morning, I decided to light a candle. I browsed my green kitchen counter for a piece of white paper. As I pace up and down the cold white floor of my kitchen, I come across this perfectly folded piece of paper. I pick a pick it up, walk across the kitchen to the stove. I wait and listen, listen for any lingering sounds which could mean my mom is awake. I woke up early for this moment because I knew it was a time when everyone would be, quiet, everyone would be asleep. I looked at the clock that sits on top of the counter. 7.15 is the time it reads. I still have plenty of time to make this happen. So please join me in giving all of our young authors uh, a round of applause. 
And I think after hearing the inspiring message from Sharon Yim Bridges and Tina Wells, that we need to think together about ways of publishing the works of our students who submit their writing to the Scholastic Arts and Writing Awards um, locally. So there's a national publication of student writers, but I think it would be a great idea to publish the works of these students, because I'm sure as you listen to the excerpts, you want it to read more.